Hello YouTube. Well, I'm exploring around Ely, Nevada. Came up here for a uh, steam train ride, which I missed the last time I was here three years ago. That'll be in the next video. And uh, uh, the last video you saw, I went to the local museum with the uh, giant short-faced bear skeleton, which was pretty cool. Uh, but today I actually went to uh, the Renaissance Village, which is a collection of houses that miners and railroad workers lived in, and they're decorated uh, as different nationalities that worked here. So Chinese, English, Irish, Slavic, uh, Italian, Spanish. I think that was it. Um, unfortunately, it's not open yet. It opens, I uh, call the Chamber of Commerce, it opens up on the 1st of May. Even though it's listed on Google as being open, it's not. So I look it around, what else is in the area? Well, about 15 miles uh, east of it is these charcoal ovens. <coughs> now these are, we've seen some before, if you've been following me for a while, that were um, in, um, Utah. Let's go on inside here. And uh, these are way bigger and better constructed. They are 30 feet high and 27 feet across at the base. And they got the, the lower door and the upper door. And all these little openings around the bottom were to let air in in the in the very beginning of the, the process. Now, why charcoal ovens? They got six of them here. Uh, well, on the road in about four or five miles that way up in there is the uh, old ghost town. Actually, I guess it's just a couple foundations left of uh, Ward, where they um, they mined uh, silver, I think. Anyway, in order to smelt that silver, they needed charcoal. Charcoal did a much better job, uh, readily available, lots of trees here back then. Uh, so they, they built these ovens, they got six of them here. Uh, all in really good shape and what they would do is fill them up now each of these would hold 35 cords of wood a cord being eight foot by eight foot by four foot high and so 35 of those in each one and to fill one of these would take five or six acres of trees and when they'd start the fire in the bit, they'd basically uh, stack up these logs inside with smaller kindling and, and smaller stuff up the, uh, the center. And when they'd start that fire, of course they'd have all these holes open to get the air going, get that nice hot fire going. Let's take a look in this one. So they get the hut, I imagine this uh, in the center. It's going up, all the way up, and through all these little holes, air would be coming in, get this fire going. You can see that it's still stained, and that's 150 years later. Um, so they get the fire going, and then basically, choke these off. I think the first one actually had some some stones to put into these holes. And you can see like these holes go right right through. Um, so they put they could be able to block those off and star and they'd block the door off and the upper door and they'd starve it for oxygen. So you got a fire going but it would slowly um, it would 
it would smolder basically for but you can't block off all year uh but it would smolder for 12 days and then uh i'm i imagine they capped off the top or something to just totally put it out I'm not absolutely sure but um they would get uh what was it about 50 bushels i think of um charcoal per cord so here you go 50 bushels per cord 35 cords is 1750 bushels per oven times six is 10,500 bushels every 12 days and this gives you an idea how they did it they said they would stack it all the way up to the top brush and whatnot up through here and it would take uh what was it um between 30 and 50 bushels to reduce one ton of ore so pretty you know well let's see 50 bushels uh, i'm not gonna even try to do that math but you'd be, uh, well, 50, 2010, 2010 uh, tons of ore. Of course, every 12 days they'd empty this, they'd be filling them right back up again. Now, I don't know if they, I would assume that they would do one, they didn't burn them all at the same time, or maybe they did. Um, I would do a one at a one at a time so that you're always cycling through but anyway that's what they what these are uh these are pretty big pretty cool looking and um but they only were in operation for three years uh 1876 to 79 and then the silver boon waned the trees were gone they were pulling in trees from 35 miles away because obviously at 35 cord or five acres uh, every time, five or six acres every time they fill this up every 12 days for one. Uh, imagine how many how many acres of trees they cleared out of here. And I mean, the mountains are right up here. Um, not sure how big the trees were back then, but there's these trees uh I'm not sure i think there's there's cedar i think um they aren't all that big so anyway uh afterwards they the uh some of the times the prospectors uh would go in these and uh get away from harsh weather i mean hey i can make a nice house in one of these would don't you think and uh there's actually uh so the one or two stagecoach bands is hid from the law in these ovens and uh so there you go it's about 18 miles like i said outside of uh to the east and there's uh there's a state it's a state park there's a campground um the uh it's a paid campground i'm not sure um what the cost is but i'm cheap i stayed at a loves in town and i'm going to stay at a another truck stop tonight before i go over to the museum or to the railroad museum tomorrow but anyway there you go just a little side trip out here uh, see what's out in the countryside and i will see you on the next video stay safe i'll see you down the road